Jesus died so we might live. Amen. Textual sermon based for this message on the last Sunday in the church here is from Matthew 25, focusing in on verses 31 to 34 and also verse 41. Dear friends in Christ, growing up I did not listen to many Frank Sinatra songs. I knew who he was, his ties to the mafia, and that Don Rickles liked to make fun of him. But as my musical listening expanded, I started to enjoy some of his songs. I especially enjoyed my way. As God's child who has always done his own thing, I could relate to the lyrics. Do you remember this verse? And now the end is near, and I face the final curtain. My friend, I'll say it clear. I'll state my case, of which I'm certain. I've lived a life that's full. I've traveled each and every highway. And more, much more than this, I did it my way. Are you ready for the curtain call? Webster's defines a curtain call as an appearance by a performer after the final curtain of a play in response to the applause of the audience. Jesus says in our text, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations. That is all of us. It is the curtain call. When our performance on earth ends, there is an evaluation of our performance. It is the summons of God that no man can escape. He evaluates us. Shakespeare wrote this in Macbeth. Life but a walking shadow. A poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then it's heard no more. That curtain call is not an if, but a certainty. There is a foreboding in our world that grows day by day. Even those who question the existence of God have to wonder, where is it all headed? And so it's the wind of Christ's return and not the if. Dr. Francis Pieper, theologian in our Lutheran Church and former president of the seminary in Fort Wayne, said, certain as Christ's visible return, the exact time and hour of its occurrence is hidden, as Christ said. But of that day, the hour is not known by man. Not the angels of heaven either, but my Father only. In vain, therefore, do men try to compute the time of his arrival. They should, however, carefully take note of the numerous signs of Christ's return, which Scripture reveals. Jesus goes on to say, Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. The Albrecht, in their commentary on Matthew, write this. The whole point of judgment is that some are saved and others are not. This theme has been consistently presented throughout Jesus' teaching ministry. Although we live in an age that prizes diversity, and tolerance, 
the sad truth is that not all people will be saved. Some people will go to hell. God wants all men to be saved. That's written in 1 Timothy 2. But the teaching of Jesus makes clear that God will not get all that he wants. God's original purpose in creating hell was not to prepare a place for sinful people. No, hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. Nevertheless, the goats who are on the king's left will join the devil and his angels in eternal flames. The end of another church year draws us to the end of everything in this world. I want to be ready. You want to be ready. God wants us to be ready. And please remember this, everything that is happening in this world is being directed by the great triune God. God is the one who does the saving. He makes the separation. We are his sheep saved by the good shepherd. Christ came to die for us so that we wouldn't have to join the devil and his angels. His resurrection declared us victorious in the blood of the Lamb. Our Lord descended into hell to make that declarative statement to Satan. He may win parts of the game, but our Savior always wins the championship. You know that when you think about your own eternity. You know that when the casket of a loved one is lowered into the ground. You know that when you live out your Christian life in this world that mocks a return of Jesus. In the Old Testament times, God sent Azariah to King Asa. He told him that if he seeks the Lord, the Lord would be with him. If he would forsake the Lord, the Lord would forsake him. In that time in history, it was written, In their distress, they turned to the Lord. In those days, it was not safe to travel. For all the people of the land were in great turmoil. One nation was being crushed by another, and one city by another. Then God revealed this startling insight, which has been lost on America and a lot of, this, of what calls itself Christian. It says, God was troubling them with every kind of distress. But as for you, be strong and do not give up, for your work will be rewarded. Isn't that something? He does that even today. He troubles us. He shakes us. He wants our attention as a nation and as Christians. But don't miss the promise. But as for you, be strong and do not give up. For your work will be rewarded. As Jesus said about God troubling this world, when these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your head because your redemption is drawing near. Well, it is. The curtain call. 
It's closer than we think. 